Hi Travelers, Tara here, Hidden Lotus Tarot, and I am coming to you today with a general reading. Today is September 26th, 2016, and this is going to be a general reading for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Please keep in mind that because it's general, the messages will not resonate with everyone. Please check back to your um, Moon and Rising signs as they are posted. I was finally able to figure all of that stuff out. I had some issues. With, I just had some issues over the past few days. Uh, this has been a crazy, crazy Mercury retrograde. And um, I don't remember them falling between eclipses, but it has just been, I don't know. I can't even put words to it. It's just been really strange. So I'll be glad when this, we're in the shadow phase of Mercury direct. Uh, and we'll be coming out of that October 7th. Now, Pluto, your ruler or your co-ruler, has gone direct today. And because it's a big outer planet, um, well, it's an outer planet, it's going to take a little while for it to get up to speed. So for those of you who've been feeling like you have lost your scorpion mojo, it is on the way back. Um, hopefully, while it's been retrograde, you've had an opportunity to... Uh, go over some things in your past, um, maybe some past healing, looking at past relationships, financial issues. That's a good thing to do while you're in the Mercury retrograde. And so now that Pluto is coming direct, you're going to be ready to clean house because that's what Pluto does. He comes in and raises everything to the ground so that you can rebuild fresh and new. So um, I have already done some pre-shuffling here. So just give me a moment. My new Sabila's finally arrived. Don't buy into the shipping pass for Walmart. They said two days. It got here in five. So it reminds me, I got to cancel their shipping pass. You get to try it for 30 days. <clears throat> and I wasn't impressed. So <laughs> it's coming from Tennessee. What the hell? Five days to get here from Tennessee? Here we go. Nine cards down. Again, this is Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Scorpio. Wow. That's interesting. Well, this is weird energy. Wow. And there I have an emperor. Um, you know, I don't even know. You Scorpios be doing the most. So let me just see what I have here. Wow. Don't nobody do it like you Scorpios. I'm going to tell you what. There's our Pluto card. Okay. And it is our exit card. Um, let me take a look here. One second. I have three major arcana cards here. And um, we don't include the emperor. This is the overall energy of the spread. <clears throat> and um, so whatever is going on here, I can't quite figure it out yet. But whatever's going on here, um, you really have control over this. What I find compelling are these two cards and the reason why I find them compelling is because this represents the Sun in Gemini okay and that time frame is June 11th through the 20th maybe that will that um, date will mean something to some of you or that time frame and then I have the Knight of Swords, which represents Gemini. But because he's a court card, there is no certain date. So this is something that, again, it's going to be around the time of Gemini. But we also know that Gemini is the twins, uh, being of two minds, um, being fickle and flirty. And I don't mean that in an ugly way. Um, but basically, so Geminis are so... Um, focused on the mental plane. They have a lot of ideas going on. They're, they move fast. They speak fast. They flip from one thing to the next. Okay. 
Um, this represents the third house, which is communications, which represents the swords, communications and thoughts. So I find that to be that both of these are representing Gemini in some way, shape or form. And uh, they sandwich down the middle here. Um, this is past, present, future, past, present, and future. Of course, the interplay in between the cards. Now, what I see, our focus is the nine of wands. And um, to me, this is a card of perseverance. Um, because we have this guy standing in front of these eight wands. And we can look at those eight wands as obstacles or challenges things that he has overcome, he's battled, and he's gotten over them. As you can see, he's got his head bandaged up, and he's resting on his 10th uh, wand, um, which means that there's still some work to be done here. He, This person expects a, I don't know, maybe they expect to have to battle through this, um, whatever this other obstacle is a person's hanging on to. But at the same time, this person is looking over towards the past at this Queen of Cups. Um, and this is the card of also not only perseverance, but it is about determination and it is about being wounded. Um, and so perhaps for some of you Scorpios, this is um, an opportunity or you have been struggling with a relationship from the past. We do have the Queen of Cups here. Now, this could either be you if you are a Scorpio female or someone else who's dealing with the Scorpio female, or it could be the entire spread, a Scorpio male who is dealing with someone um, who in their eyes or before may have been their queen of cups, okay? Um, and we can see that there is a um, something about the stance of the person on this nine of wands who's looking over very, very guarded at this queen. They're both faced towards the past. And as I was saying before I opened the cards that, you know, maybe some of you have been going through a time frame where you've been looking back over past things um, and trying to clear those things out. What we do have, your two co-rulers here, we have the tower represents Mars, also Uranus. And the Uranus energy is basically the sudden unexpected event, okay? But your co-rulers are Mars and Pluto. So that gives us the Tower and the Judgment card. And this is all about making sweeping changes, radical, drastic changes. If they haven't happened already, this is what you need to do so that you can come and be ready to be called to a new life, okay? Now, um... I can see for some of you, there was some type of celebration. You know, something happened during this Mercury retrograde. I think for, particularly I'm going to say here in the Scorpio, because I have Gemini and Mercury represented these three cards. Um, so this is Mercury and Cancer. This represents Cancer. Um, but what this tells me, Cancer is a very soft sign. It is a crustacean like the Scorpio, but its nature is much, much different. Scorpio tends to, the scorpion tends to hide out in its nest. It um, really thrives on the underworld, things that are dark, um, getting really true to, uh, down to the true essence of things, being able to look at things and really, really dig deep. And cancer is more of a soft sign. It'll come out and hang out in the sunlight for a little while. You know, something messes with it. It'll try to pinch in, grab you. You know, and then it'll scuttle on off and do whatever it does. Whereas the scorpion, once it comes out of its lair, if you mess with it, it's going to sting you and could possibly kill you. That's what it does. So what this Mercury in Cancer, this Three of Cups represents, this is the Lord of Abundance. And what this represents, to, and this was the time frame of July 2nd, it looks like through the 11th, they got wet. So we're looking at a time frame of June 11th through the 20th through June, July 2nd through the 11th. And this could be literally some type of celebration or event, something that made you feel very, very good. But as we can see here, um, maybe this was, I'm not reading that it's more like being, it's more like a disappointment, maybe... 
I, I can't explain it. I, I'll come back to that. Whatever this thing is, both the event itself and this uh, kind of came through and shook your foundations, made you perhaps um, opened up something for you. Maybe it could be past wounds, past hurts, past angers, resentments, whatnot. There's no coins here. So it doesn't look like it's a financial issue. It really reads like it is a um, emotional challenge here. Um, we can see here over here, the tower comes to this queen of cups. Um, again, they're both looking to the past. So I would assume that this is speaking to some past event, perhaps the, um, downfall of a relationship. Maybe it was the disappointments in a past relationship that have come about that looked from the beginning as though it was going to be something very wonderful. And that was going to bring a start, but this card can also, I think with the tower, can also speak to sometimes the unknown. And that's really what he's doing. He's stepping off into the unknown. He's either going to step off into the unknown and step out on faith and know that everything's going to be all right, or the person's going to hang around and allow uh, dark things to prevent him from stepping out. Okay. And because he's not able to step out, this fool, this causes some kind of cataclysm for him in some way for the full shape or form. Um, but as I can see, we have this night. So this is an event, someone coming from uh, west to east, an offer, an offer being extended. Um, it really, someone stepping forward, but not really forging that stream that's crossing the emotion. So it's like someone is at the boundary of making an offer but they stop just short of it, okay? Um, we do see that there's an opportunity to start new, and this is, in a sense, two Uranus cards here on the end between this Nine of Wands. So one of the things that have has come through about this Nine of Wands is something that really shook you to your core and your foundations, but also it, it gives you a brand new opportunity to start something new as you can see we have this okay um and in the reverse having the opportunity to step into something new a new phase a new uh period of growth or expansion um but being guarded and not doing so and that leading to your downfall um so this is quite an interesting spread now we see that here with the fool there's another event that comes through, uh, something, and he's rushing in. He's rushing in. I don't know if he's rushing in to say to the fool, you know, hey, you know, watch where you're stepping, or if he's saying, hey, go for it. I'm not exactly sure. And maybe this is why we have the judgment card. There has to be a decision about what to do here. And as we can see, um, if I go here, Three of Cups, Knight of Cups, and to the Fool card. So, you know, there is something to celebrate, obviously, with an offer that is being presented to you to start something new. But I also feel that there is something from the past that hasn't been laid to rest yet. Okay? And this is the opportunity to lay it to rest. Um... I don't have any repeater numbers here. I have a 3, a 10, a 9, the 0, and the 2 with the 4. I have two court cards, actually three court cards here. But I always look at the events, uh, the knights as events. Yes, they can represent people. But to me, it's more because it's they're on horses. And horses represent movement, strength, um, travel, um, courage, uh, intuition. They're highly intuitive animals, uh, horses are. Um, so it always represents to me some type of event because it indicates some type of movement. So something happening, something being presented, um, something occurring. It's not a static energy like we're standing here in this nine space. Um, Whatever this thing is, it involves the energy of the emperor. Uh, this is also fire, and Pluto is fire as well as Mars. So this could literally be, whether you are male or female, same sex 
uh, or heterosexual. This is really about you getting your fire back and stepping back into your full phoenix power. Your birthday comes next month. And I know for many Scorpios, they have a lot of Libra factors in their charts because it sits, it's the sign right before Lib uh, Scorpio. So um, I, I feel that there is going to be some, at some point in time, you're going to have that touch of Jupiter and Libra coming through. And that is about having um, growth and expansion through partnership. Okay. So um, right underneath this, which is interesting, is I have this nine of cups. So let's take a look with the uh, Sibylas. I don't know. I just got the new deck. I bought three of them, by the way. I'm going to be caught out again without them. Um, even here, it's like they're, you know, something beautiful or wonderful or pleasant. And threes are the start. It's the building of something. You know, three people coming together. Now, these three ladies, typically this can represent like a graduation or a baby shower, an engagement, a marriage, um, a proposal, you know, winning that contract, getting that job, getting that house that you always wanted, that car, um, some kind of celebrating some kind of milestone here. So, um, but as I can see, there's resistance to it. As if the cards are saying it's not trusted. So they're kind of waiting to see what's going to happen or waiting on the news. And this does say news is coming. Um, and if things have been pretty bad, as I can look here with these two cards, um, per se, and I don't want to say these two things were bad, but this indicates that there's some kind of disappointment or some kind of um, resignation in the way you think. So this could be a perception, like maybe you feel something's come to an end or you think something has come to an end. Okay. But then you get the news that maybe it's not the news coming. Um, and it's like all of a sudden there's a, it's like a wake up call here, the tower with the, with the Knight of cups, it's a wake up call and, and you're being, you're, it's a wake up call and you're being tasked to, Step into your power. Be rational. Be logical. Don't get all, you know, scorpionic and start letting your emotions swirling around and getting the better of you and um, being all suspicious and doubtful of things. I mean, you know, everybody deserves something wonderful. Everybody deserves love. Everybody deserves uh, love and security. Those two things go hand in hand. Everybody deserves respect within their relationships. And this is what Libra is all about. It's about finding the balance. But before you can find the balance with someone else in partnership, and I don't care if it's romantic or business or otherwise, you're first going to have to find the balance of harmony within yourself. Um, and to me, it speaks like it's it's trying to, the energy is kind of disjointed, but it's trying to blend itself together to bring some kind of harmony. But there's going to have to be um, a change. There's, there's going to have to be a change in, in some way, shape, or form. OK. And maybe, you know, and that's kind of been a theme that I've been seeing, even in some of the personal readings that you haven't gotten all of the news yet. And I would say that's very true because we know we've had this crazy Mercury retrograde that fell between these two eclipses. I have never seen anything like that before. Hopefully I'll be around long enough to see it happen again. But man, that was it's been quite interesting. So let's take a look first. I want to take a look at what this nine of wands is about. What is this being on guard and being defensive to something towards the past? So much so that this offer may pass you by. It's, you know, whatever this offer is, it's going the other way from the way in which you're focusing your attention. Um... And this could be that, indeed, some of you may just go ahead and take that leap of faith um, in, in whatever this is, you know, however that plays in for you. If you have a choice to make or a decision or um, you're waiting for something, some news that's going to tell you, you know, or at least point you in the direction in which you should be going. Um, I think once you get that, some of you may indeed be stepping out 
on faith. Um, that's great. Let's see. This almost reads like it's some kind of sexual disappointment. And I say, I say that because the, the tower is speaking to me uh, not only about drastic change, but it's also a phallic symbol. So it could be something like, it's like there's some kind of, either someone feeling that they can't have sex with somebody else again, disappointed because of that. Because there really is a passion there. This person really excites them. This is a phallic symbol. So, um, maybe that's what this line is speaking about. You know, this is Pisces and this is Pisces. Oh, it's just Cancer or uh, Cancer and this is Pisces. So this could also be um, someone trying to weigh up whether or not the relationship is strictly sexual or not. Or is there really some substance there? Or is it just sex? What's interesting is that this, the Ten of Swords, which will be turning into an Ace, it's sort of like the saying, oh man, it's it's gonna it's starting all over again. But then it goes from a Ten to a Knight. I'm going to look at this card as well. Let's take a look at this Nine of Wands. Because that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. I mean, I, I've learned that I don't have to understand everything, but it just kind of doesn't make sense to me. Nine of Wands. Remember I said it's like there's an offer that's going to pass you by? Great foresight. Falsita. Now, lies, hypocrisy, hidden intentions, but it could also be fear. Remember I said fear of the unknown? That's kind of what it reads like. Someone's looking towards the future, but they don't know what the hell is coming. Is it going to be deceptive? Is it lies? Is it what, what the hell is it? And this is at their back. They're looking this way with the Sabilas. So this is someone being on the defensive for fear of the unknown. Wow, that's interesting. Like my daughter, she used to not sleep with the lights off. She would like want the lights on. I'm like, ain't it dark when you close your eyes? Yeah. Then what the hell? <laughs> huh? It's dark when you close your eyes. So I got her a nightlight. All right, let's take a look at what this Knight of Swords is. This is such a... Uh, it's not um, a discordant energy. It's not something that's real choppy. It's just uh, the energy is kind of swirling around like a whirlpool. There's a lot of things going on, but they're all under the surface. When I take these cards off, and just look at it. Um, I'm, I'm seeing the top layer of what's happening. Once I put the Sibylas on, then it reveals another layer of energy to me. And there's a lot of things going on under the surface. That's through Scorpius. Now, what I have here is the Dilleranti. This is stupid actions and stupid behaviors. 
But look at this. What's stupid about being happy and celebrating happiness of the heart? What dumb thing could you have done? Happiness of the heart. And then the lemoneo, the spiritual bond of a couple, um, the highly spiritual nature of the couple. Um, this is the card of nuptials or contracts. We do have this mercante here. Um, to me, this is like having two three of cups come out simply by the imagery. They're dancing. Everybody's got their hands up. Um, so I'm wondering if this uh, falsita and the delirante don't have to do with this ten of swords here. Now, this is some news or some event. Um, and it could just simply be um, thoughts rushing in. Man, that was stupid what I did. That was stupid what I said. I did it because I, uh, I'm, I'm afraid. I don't know what's going to happen. And so this, the event doesn't have to necessarily be, and this card also represents uh, your neighborhood. Okay, and your community. So um, it could also be that you're you're starting to view where you live. Um, maybe you might consider um, moving to be with someone, or maybe someone moving to be with you. But uh, community and neighborhood, um, really, if it's not those things literally, then what that means in a general sense, it's something support. There's the idea of support here, okay, if that makes any sense to you. Um, let's take a look at this. Um, you Scorpios always have the most interesting ratings. <laughs> always. Okay, let's take a look and see what this, um, first I want to see what this tower is all about. Well, and look, he's looking at that. See, he's thinking about that. So this is thought. Remember I said it's not really, uh, it doesn't feel like, the card doesn't read like this is a betrayal. It reads like there's some disappointment or, or someone who is thinking whatever their thoughts were, there were negative thinking. This card can also sometimes be the, uh, the Eight of Swords is, is the known as the victim card, but this also could be like a victim, and that's how it's reading. Man, I got stabbed in the back again, or I don't even know what to think anymore. Let me just lay down and give up. Resignation. That's really what it reads like. And so now the tower comes in to say, wait a minute, that crap ain't true. Think that over because there has been a constance. There's something constant in this. There's an immutability. This could simply be um this revelation came through a letter, an email, a text message. Um, it's not a face-to-face -face kind of a thing. Um, <clears throat> and suddenly you get the revelation that it's really not this. Okay? Um, even though that's what you've been thinking. Now, I don't care if this is male or female, same-sex or heterosexual. Um, we're not going to just per se say that this is a male thinking this. In a sense, it is kind of a distinctly male energy because I have these cards that have come out, um, but this could fit for anybody. So it's kind of like um, if you look at these cards alone, someone thinking about the constancy of the messages they receive. And if it, these are not actual messages, then these could be messages coming from above, spiritual messages. Uh, perhaps some of you, I know you are water signs. We do have Cancer and Pisces on the other side. This could be really you are um, receiving um, messages, signs, synchronicities. Uh, this is the bolt of lightning. It comes to knock the top off so that you can open yourself up and to receive whatever this purification is that's coming for you. Um, I want to look at the Ten of Swords. 
Because even though whatever this event was feels like a tower or was a tower, these three cards say there's something constant in it. And it does have to do with communication. It could be that perhaps your communication style has just been crap the whole time. Okay? It's been constantly giving you trouble <laughs> till finally something gave. Okay? Um, because again, these are thoughts so or perceptions. And so to me, it kind of reads like you, you haven't been able to pull your head out of your butt in one respect and thinking that this is what it is. And it's not. It's simply a perception. If that makes any sense. So the tower comes in to clear that away. And this is a new offer of, of, of fresh emotions, okay? To me, this, this guy is coming in with the Ace of Cups. So this old way of thinking does not serve anymore. Two towers next to each other. Now, I think the Giovanni Fanchula, she represents the Virgin. So maybe this is something, even though this card came out here uh, in the time of Gemini, that June 11th through the 20th, maybe this culmination. Remember I said there's really no timing in the universe. Everything is relative. For us, what may seem like five years is really like a millisecond uh, in, in, in the universe. So maybe this has to do with... Uh, Someone with virginal-like qualities, um, someone who is self-contained. That's what a virgin means. A virgin is not someone who is sexually pure. Um, a virgin is a, a, a person, a woman who, in olden days, a virgin was a woman who had not been married, okay, but yet was still able to take care of herself. She was a self-contained individual. She was simply called a virgin because she had not been married yet, okay? Um, didn't mean she wasn't having sex. So, um, but this is someone with either virgin-like qualities, um, someone who can uh, appear to be younger than they are, perhaps, because as we can see, she comes up with the lamika, the relationship of trust, the friendship, um, someone that you can confide in, the confidant. But here we have disgrazia, a very misfortunate event. But it went from this to this and this. And if these are going to be representative of swords and communication, and this could be that there's no more talking between two people. They're done. But there's something uh, coming. Let's just go ahead and take a quick look with the judgment. I don't know how long this is. Okay, it ran over way longer than I wanted it to. But um, I'm just going to take a quick look at the judgment to see. The emperor energy is just strictly saying, you know, Balance yourself because um, if the news comes in and it's the news that you want, we do have that underneath there. If it's the news that you want to hear that you've been waiting on, um, it's going to give you the opportunity to increase and expand your abundance, your, your, your wealth across many, many areas of your life. And that could be some of that Jupiter coming in, you know, but if you're not in the right place, It'll pass you by. You'll have to wait till Jupiter comes into your sign in uh, the end of October 2018. Now, this is either, you know, it's, it's funny because it, it reads like, it reads like somebody said something that they didn't want to say or, or they said something perhaps in haste without thinking of the consequences uh, because they they there's a fear of the unknown. And, and I say that because I have the collaborator, the falsita, and the deliranti. Um, and we know that the domestico uh, is the servant. Um, He's the collaborator. He's kind of a sleazy guy. I mean, you know, he does things behind people's back. He takes messages. He says things perhaps that he doesn't mean. He curries favor. Um, it could also speak to uh, the man returning. But as you can see, 
we have the amante male requited love, but he's looking at this domestico. Nobody loves that kind of guy, not really. Um, and then we have superbia. So is this really um, a triumphant return? We want to just take it that this is the man coming home. Is this a successful return of this lover? Huh? Or is it another something perpetrated? Even though this is the space that the person is in or wants to be, this is arrogance vanity and haughtiness and again it's like the news is coming in uh as i say you guys always have the most interesting spreads um that's what i have for you scorpio it does look like there's uh i don't know i i just did this in libra like there's there's an, an apology wanting to be made or some type of resolution or some type of compromise or agreement because as we can see here it kind of went up in flames this Grazia Mercante Lemoneo, if we take them in the order that they came in, uh, this is the guy who makes contracts and deals, okay? Um, and this is a contract and a bond, but this crap, it went up in flames. Was it over some type of communications issue? Well, what, did that come about because it, you know, is this a success or is it is it really uh, ego-based? That difficult energy of the emperor. All right. That's what I have for you. I hope that helped. And until next time, namaste.